Okay then guys, so as you've seen from those videos, shit went pretty tits up and it is now the Monday of the week after. I've not given up, I've carried on grafting and at the point we're at right now, the M52 block is back being bare again, as you can see from the old uh, engine stand, I put the caps back on just so I can lift it up easily enough. And over here we have our M50 B25 non-vanos engine block. Now one of the things I was worried about this was bore wear. I had a good look at the block before I started playing around with it at all, and I'm pretty happy with those bores. I've given them a quick stone hone, hand hone, and they've come up relatively clean. One of, if you've played around with one of these engines and something I've been reading about is the lip that you might get in the top of the bore here. I've put piston rings in here and I've sized them up and there's no difference between the top of the bore and slightly lower down inside the bore. I'm going to go for this block, I'm going to build it up and we're going to get to that stroker at the end of this week hopefully. So I'm just about to put this on the engine stand and then I'm going to start putting the crank bearings back in, put the crank in it, torque up the main caps and then start seeing if I can get back to the point where I've got a short block again. Right then cats, so we've got the block on the engine stand and we have got all the main caps out and they're ready now to accept the new oil jet squirters which go in the bottom of the block. I'll show you that in just a second. I've just been inspecting a few other little bits and bobs and I want to show you a couple of things I've been thinking about swapping from an M52 block to an M50 like I have. Okay so looking at the block here um, the first thing that I've noticed is the threads in the cylinder head holes are dramatically smaller than they are in the M52. Let's just give you a little uh, measurement on that. The thread depth on these M50 ones, as accurate as I can get it, is 30.7mm. The thread depth on the M52 is 46.2mm. So my initial thought was, god damn it, I'm going to have to have different cylinder head bolts, but the cylinder head bolts are the same part number, so they've got to be the same length. Therefore, what that tells me is the actual holes that we're looking at here are just the right depth for the cylinder head bolts as they are standard. The ones in the M52 must be deeper. Interesting point to note, but doesn't really cause me any grief. The next problem I've got is to do, well, let's show you actually first. Let's show you the difference in the oil jet squirters. So, right, so this is the bottom of the M50 block. And on here, you will see there are some holes. Just to tip my finger there, there, and there so on and so forth. That's the oil jet squirters for the M50 engine. They actually sit underneath the crank bearings. So I can't get in here at the moment and put new crank bearings in because I'm waiting on one oil jet squirter that I was missing. Also, if you note here, we've got some orange dots and some green dots. That's donating, donating the different bearing sizes that go into this block. So that's something I'm gonna have to watch out for when I come to put it back together. Oil pump doesn't line up with this bolt hole here. So I'm gonna to have to open up the hole in the oil pump, but I believe that that should work fine. And then the final little tip bit that I've got, Main timing chain guide here, this is an M52 one, it's completely plastic. The M51 is aluminium with a plastic liner on it. It fits on a bolt that looks like this, that screws into the side of the M52 block. If I come round here, you will see the M50 has a pin that's driven into the side of the block uh, and then a circlip goes on the end of it, so it sort of locates the timing chain guide. If I take the M50 timing chain guide, not only does it not locate in that little circlip groove there that you can make out, it's too far back towards the block there, so it needs to be spaced out slightly and I was having a bit of a conundrum of how I was going to do that, is essentially it's got to take up the thread, uh, sorry this nut that you can see at the bottom of this pin. So what I've done is I've chopped the bottom off the one that I took off my M52 and made a little spacer and then I will run this behind the M52 one so they look a little bit like that which then leaves me just the right amount of space to get a circlip in behind that and hold that in place and this then is built for taking the tensioner that I'm going to use and saves me not to spend any more money basically so we're happy happy days. So at the moment we're at right now it's Monday I've given all the threads a chase out but I'm still not happy how clean they are I'm going to go a bit more on them. As soon as I get the objects squirter from BMW which I believe is tomorrow they look like this I'll get the oil jet squirters installed into the uh, the bearing ends then and then I'm going to start putting this thing back together I'm waiting on some bolts arriving for the main caps I'm going to be changing them this time I think if I can get the right ones then we can build this block up so yes a couple of little observations things which you need to know if you're going to be doing this sort of swap over onwards and upwards I think tomorrow we get the oil jet squirter about lunchtime so we'll pick that up and then I'll probably start putting this together Wednesday morning and voila, as they say, here we have a crankshaft with six pistons in. So I can now stop panicking a little bit about the bearings. Then we'll have to replace another set of bearings in this job. Turns over nicely by hand. Nothing seems to be catching anything. From this point forward, I'm a little bit stuck again because I'm waiting on a new oil tray, an oil baffle plate. 
This M52 plate is unfortunately useless to me now. It would have originally sat somewhere roughly like that. And as you can see, none of these bolt holes line up. If I just make that nice and clear, these small bolt holes here for 10 mil bolts. Would be lovely if they did, but they don't. I've had to buy a new plate for an M50, which isn't the end of the world, but it means I've got to take this bracket off of here and weld it onto the new baffle plate when it arrives. That should be here in a couple of days. In addition to that, I'm using the M52 oil pump, which is amazing, by the way, at how much oil will just continually keep weeping out of this fucking thing. He's gonna go on like this, and I don't know if you better make this out. The M52 oil pump doesn't quite fit perfectly. This bolt hole here lines up perfectly, as does the front one. That's no issue at all. The one at the back is offset. Uh, what I'm going to be doing, which I've seen others do online, is opening this out a little bit to 10 millimeters, and that should allow me then to get a bolt down into that hole there. I'm gonna do that today. I'm gonna have a little play around with the, uh, the baffle plate today. And then once I've got that, everything can go back on this bottom end here. I mean, start putting head back on and getting back to reasonable stuff. We're a week down the line. But we're getting somewhere, okay? Crank is in, pistons are in, oil pump's not far away, baffle plate we're waiting on. Looking pretty good, guys. Looking pretty good. It's getting exciting again. So I'd just like to mention that this time I am actually changing these main cap bolts. I bought some new main cap bolts from a bolt supplier rather than going direct to BMW. I paid a shitload less money for them and they are exactly the same as the bolts that are coming out. I'm actually just going through the assemble crank at the moment, pulling the bolts out one at a time and changing them for the new ones. So this one here is... The M51 that I've just taken out, that's a standard BMW bolt as far as I know and as far as I'm aware. 10.9 grade, self-coloured, M10 by 75 mil, 1.5 mil thread. And this is one of my new ones. As you can see, they are exactly the same bolt, same length, same colour, same grade on the head, 10.9. He's going to go in there, I'm going to give him 20 Newton metres of torque and then a, a pull of, of 50 degrees on these ones. So slightly different torque angles. I'm getting a bit better at using this torque angle gauge now. It was a bit tricky at first, but... It's actually quite easy once you get used to the way it works. Eagle Eyed will see what I'm laying this down on is a new sump baffle. So we're now on Friday. I've been waiting for the sump baffle to arrive. Great eBay seller that's helped me out there. And we are now torqued up on the main cap bolts and I can now proceed forward. So I'm just mark these up so I know I've torqued them. So the next process in this build then is to finally get along with the new sump baffle. This is the old M52 baffle that doesn't fit. I've taken off the bracketry from the top of it here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer it onto this little bad boy. So I believe he's going to go something like that, I think. And one of the things that I'm aware of, I think, if I just get the crank pulley, I was expecting the crank to touch the baffle there. But with a fair few rotations, you can see I don't have any interference, which is great. What I basically want to do is get my ever-weeping oil pump <laughs> and plonk them on here and just eyeball where our bracketry wants to go. This is the bracket that I've taken off the old one. Now I'm going to pull this all back apart again and I should weld that bracket as is onto that baffle. Okay, so we've got the plate on, we've got the, the bracket welded on I've gone crazy with the wire brush and trying to make sure that there's absolutely no loose bits of weld. Oil pump can then be loosely fitted and we'll drop some bolts in there. Remember this hole is a little bit iffy because it's been ground out to allow me to fit the M52 pump. We're really motoring along man. Right then. So, another little check just for clearance, I think. Right, okay, so there you go, standard hardware. I'm not getting any contact between the crank or the pistons on the, the baffle. I was expecting it to tap, but it's not. So excellent. Next port call then. I need my circlip for my timing chain tension. Or do we go with one of these little bad boys? Okay, that's perfect. That's gone right in there beautifully. Okay, sweet as an act. Next thing you put on here is the bottom timing chain. She blows. Okay then cats, so we've made it all the way back to where we were last Thursday. It's now Friday. We've got the head on and I'm going to try and torque it. I'm fairly confident I'm not going to have a problem here, but I am shitting my pants as you can expect. Interesting thing to note with a steel block, which doesn't make any sense to me because it goes against everything you think about, is the main cap torque 
and the head bolt torque is actually slightly less than it is on the aluminium block so these are 30 newton meters and then 90 degrees and 90 degrees rather than 40 that they were on the aluminium head if anyone can explain that to me i'd be more than happy to have a little listen about it and see what we're talking about so number one bang in the middle 30 newton meters so number one and 14 Okay, so that's the first stage. That's the easy bit, guys. I'm gonna have a puff of the vape pen before we go any further. I'm gonna give them a few seconds just to settle. Uh, here goes nothing in cats. It's the first night. Okay. Okay, so we're doing better than we did before. Let's do this. Number one. Oh my god. Oh, that's tight. Number one. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number 10 Number 11 Number 12 13 Head is on, man. Yes, no problems with the bolts that time. <sighs> I'm half tired, I'm half shit in my pants. Okay, man, uh, excuse my red mark in the head that comes from wearing the camera on my head. Oh man, that's one of the best sights that I could possibly think of seeing. I've been pretty dejected after the block given up on me before. I can't tell you good it feels to get those head bolts tightened up. My god, man, they're tight. Holy shit. I would never have held on that old block, man. Fucking hell, they were nowhere near holding. Right, okay, so they, they are lesson learned. Right, okay, so I'm gonna go and have some lunch now. I'm chuffed to bits. I've got a cylinder head on and tightened up. Oh, man, I can't describe the feeling. <laughs> it feels excellent. I'm almost high as a kite off the back of that. Brilliant. Right, I am gonna go and eat some fucking Taco Bell or some shite food just to make myself feel even better. I'll come back this afternoon and we'll start thinking about getting Timing sorted on this on this dodgy cam here by using the dial indicator. <sighs> very, very pleased, Paul. Very pleased, Paul. Yes. Okay, man. Right. Let's go with it then. So we're going to call it a pause here for today just now. It is about 12 o'clock. I've been here for two hours and got what you've seen done. <sighs> M50B30. It's coming. It's coming. Hope it's good. Please be good. Thanks, right, sweet. Okay.